Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how we can represent signed and unsigned numbers in hexadecimal, decimal, and binary, and we're going to be looking at how we can convert between those different types manually by hand. So just a disclaimer, this is going to be pretty math heavy on the hex and binary and the conversions there, and there are a lot of tools online that will do all of these conversions for you, but I think that it's really important to be able to manually do these by hand so you can understand what is actually happening under the hood and how your processor is actually representing this different information. So let's open our ARM assembly reference and see the different data types that we have to work with. First of all, we have our byte data type, which is going to be our most basic data type, which is just going to be eight bits, eight individual bits of information. We also have our half word, which is going to be 16 bits. And then our word data type, which we use probably most often, is going to be double the amount of a half word, and that's going to be a total of 32 bits. So if we go over to our CPU later, we can see that each of our processor registers that's available to us is actually holding eight different zeros right here. So these are actually representing a hexadecimal number. So each one of these zeros individually is actually four bits of data. And this equates to a total of 32 bytes. So we see we have eight of these zeros and each one of these is four bits. So eight times four is 32, which gives us our 32 bit architecture that we are actually working in. So just a fun fact, four bits of data for this individual hexadecimal number right here is actually called a nibble. So four bits is a nibble, eight bits is a byte. Kind of funny. But let's go back to our reference manual and look at how we can represent signed and unsigned numbers. So you might be thinking up to this point, hey, we've only been working with uh, positive numbers. But what if we actually wanted to represent a negative number in this hexadecimal form inside of our processor registers? The processor is actually using something called two's complement to represent this information. So that means that we actually have one bit that's supposed to be representing the actual sign of the number. So that dedicated bit is going to tell us whether we're working with a positive or negative number if we're looking at a number that's including the sign. So if we have a one, that's going to tell us, hey, this number is actually a negative number. And if we have a zero, that's telling us this number is actually a positive number. And all of the bits on the left hand side of the number are actually going to be padded with the same value of that individual sign bit. So that was a lot to throw at you. So let's go ahead and take a look at what exactly that looks like inside of our CPU later. So let me add just some random numbers so we can go through and try and convert those by hand and see what's happening. So I'm just going to say move R0. Let's do uh, 25. And this is in decimal, so I'm going to do move R1. And let's do negative 25 so we can see the positive and negative representations of these. Let's do one more. I'm going to say move R2. Let's take the value maybe 16. Then move R2. Let's do a negative 16 as well. Negative. I'm going to do pound sign. Negative 16. All right, so let's compile and load and see exactly what's happening here. Let me fix that. I meant to put R3. Okay, so we have our compilation and you can see this is our number in decimal right here and this is our number in hex right here. So let's do step over and it's going to start moving these into our registers over on the left hand side. Let's do one more step over and let's just look at this first value right here and see the weird representation that is happening right now. Let's start with the positive number first. So I'm going to copy this. Let's go over to our notepad plus plus and let's say our number in hex. Remember, this was our positive 25. It's going to be 19 in hexadecimal. 
Okay, so let's move this down and let's bring up kind of a reference if you're not super familiar with hexadecimal. So hexadecimal is going to be the same for numbers uh, 0 through 9, but then when we start with the number 10, this is actually represented by the letter A. So we also have A, let's just do A equals the number 10 in decimal, B equals the number 11, let's just do C, D, E, F, and then these are just going to be incremented like that. 12, 13, 14. And then the letter F is going to be representing the decimal number 15. So we'll just keep this up here for reference since it's kind of helpful to remember this. And then let's look at converting this hexadecimal number to binary. And then let's look at converting it to decimal. So what we can do here is first we'll take our binary number. And these are, remember, four individual bits of data. So we can have one, two, three, four is going to represent this first zero right here. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six times. Let me just do that. We'll do full notation for this. One, two, three, four, five, six. But now we get to the interesting part. How do we represent this one and this nine in binary? So the one's gonna be really simple. We can just do zero, 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 one, since that's actually gonna be one in binary. But how do we get this nine? Let me pull up a really handy reference. Let's do up to, I don't know, 32. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to write out all of the different powers of two and how these coincide over to our binary representation. So let's do backwards 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. So this is just going to be our powers of two right here. So two to the zero is going to be one. 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2 is 4, 2 to the 3 is 8, and then so on and so on. So each one of these individual bits is actually representing a power of 2 right there. So if we wanted to represent the number 1, 2 to the power of 0, because this is in the 0 index. Let me actually write this out to make this a little bit clearer. Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we'll do N. It's going to be five, four, three, two, one, zero. So that's going to be our power of two right here. So two to the zero is one. 2 to the 1 is 2. Let's write that nicer. And then this is going to be the actual exponent that you're raising 2 to. So we have 2 to the n right here. And that made my... There we go. Now we're lined up. Okay, so now let's go back to this number that we were specifically looking at, and we'll use all of these as kind of a nice reference cheat sheet. So we have our one represented already, but now we need to represent the number nine in binary. So we need to find which one of these numbers added together is actually going to produce nine. So I think we can do eight plus one is going to produce nine. So now we have to pick a number where one, we use one for every single number that we actually want to use. So we want to use one eight and then one one, and then we want to use zeros in between. And this is going to be represented by a total of four bits of data. So we have one eight, we have no fours and no twos, but we do have one one since eight plus one is nine. 
So now, this is going to be our binary representation of this hexadecimal number right here. So now let's see if we can use this knowledge to try and represent this in decimal. So let me do decimal right here. And since we already have this in binary, it gets yeah, pretty, a lot more straightforward right here. So we're going to take each of the ones here and see where they are in this index right here. And then we're going to pick the number from this table that corresponds to that power of two we're representing right here. So let's kind of work on this backwards and then add all those numbers together. So we have a one in this first place right here. So two to the power of zero, since this is the first one right here, we want to add that. It's going to be one. So two to the power of zero is one. Zero, one, two, three. Two to the power of three is eight. So we want an eight right here. So we have zero, one, two, three, four. Two to the power of four is 16. So we have a 16 here as well. And now if we add all these numbers together, 24 is 25. And let's make sure our math was correct. We did indeed put the number 25, thank goodness. Okay, let's go back. So if you look at this, that's how we can represent the number 25 in hex, then convert it to binary, and then look at it again in decimal. But now, what if we wanted to represent the number negative 25? If we go back to our CPU later, whoops, you can see we've got all of these weird Fs right here. That's because this number is actually represented in two's complement format. So I'm going to take this number and we're going to convert it over to binary and then decimal. So copy that and then we'll put in hex. This is our new number now. So now we first want to convert this to binary. So remember, we have our reference up here. So we can go through and we know that F is actually representing the number 15 right here. And so we can convert the number 15 to binary. So let's first just, I'll show you real quick. I know that the number 15 in binary is just 1111 because you'll remember that, but um, let's just demonstrate that. So 15 equals um, 1111. That's because 2 to the power of 0 is going to give us 1, plus 2, plus 4, plus 8, because remember we have all of these ones right here. So we have 1, plus 2, plus 4, plus 8. So we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 equals 15. So that's good. So that's how we know our f here in 4 bits of data is going to be 1111 which is just the number 15. So 1111, 1111, I think there's six of these again. So we'll do one, 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 one. So now we get to our interesting number, which is going to be the letter E, which we can remember is actually the number 14 in decimal. So let's convert that over to binary as well. So I'm gonna just do this again. So 14. So what of these results can we add together to get the number 14? I think if we add 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. So that means we want an 8, we want a 4, we want a 2, and we don't want a 1. So that means in binary, we're going to have 1, 1, 1, 0. So if we wanted to go back to decimal, you could say one, or sorry, no one, it can be two plus four plus eight. And that's gonna give us 14, so that's good. So our E right here can be represented by this, 
values by this 1110. Now we want to go move on to representing this 7 in binary. So again, what of these numbers can we add together to get the number 7, 4, 5, 6, 7? So I think if we do a 4, a 2, and a 1, and then have a 0 on the left hand side since we need 4 bits to represent this number. So it's going to be binary. It's going to be 0, 1, 1, 1. And then if we wanted to convert back to decimal, it would be 1 plus 2 plus 4. 4, 5, 6, 7. So good to go here. And that's our last number. So we have our number written in hexadecimal. We have our number written in binary. But now we need to do something interesting. We actually need to convert this to a positive version of this binary number. And then we can just add on the negative sign and that's gonna be the decimal representation. So really simple actually. Let me type out positive. And we'll see how we can do this. Let me line this up. So all we need to do to convert this to the positive form of this, we actually take the least significant byte. So that's gonna be the rightmost byte. That is a one. So that's gonna be actually the one that's far right in this case. And we keep that number, but then we flip all of these bits on the left hand side and just change them to the opposite form. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're flipping all of the bits up until this one right here, which is the least significant bit that is one. So first let's go zero, 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 zero. And I'm just gonna flip all of these bits. Zero, 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 zero. Zero, 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 flip this bit. This is actually a one now. Keep on flipping, one, zero, zero. And then keep this last bit right here. And that is actually going to be the positive version of this number. So if we convert this back to decimal using the previous methods, we have one to the power of zero is one. So one plus zero, one, two, three. We have one eight because two to the power of three is eight. So we add an eight here and then zero, one, two, three, four, two to the power of four is 16. So we'll add a 16 here. So that means our number is 16, 24, 25. But since we know that this was actually a negative number, since remember the ones padded here are actually just repeating the sign bit, which if the sign bit is one, that means it's a negative number. We know that this is actually going to be negative 25 right here. So if you want to double check your answers, you can just pull this up here. Let's go to hex to decimal. And we'll just pick our rapid tables, enter our hex number. Then we see our two's complement number right here is actually 25. So we're padded all on the left hand side with ones that are representing this negative sign right here. Let's go back now to our CPU later so we can look at one more example of these different conversions and how we can do them by hand. So we had our decimal number 16 and negative 16 right here. Let's let this go through and change our register values and then we'll go ahead and convert those by hand in the same way. I'm going to step over, step over one more time. And these are going to be our new numbers right here. So I'm going to copy this and let's get rid of our previous ones. Let's do hex. We'll take this number right here. I'm going to convert this to binary now. Remember each one of these is four bits. So we have six of those. So one, two, three, four, 
five, six. And now we need to convert the number one to binary, which is simple, just zero, 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 one, since two to the zero is one. And then zero, we already know, zero, 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 zero. And if we wanted to convert this over to decimal, this one's nice and simple for us. We don't have any right here, so we skip the one, two, four, eight. But we do have a one right here, so two to the power of four is gonna be 16. So that's our number right here in decimal. And then if we wanna double check, let me go back to CPU later, we can represent this in decimal, and then there's, there's our 16 right there. Now, let me do the opposite, and we'll take this number right here, and let's convert this to signed decimal. So hex is going to be this, binary, it's nice and simple. Remember, we already established that the letter F was 15 in decimal, which is 1111 in binary. So we have, looks like seven of these. So one, 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 three, four, five, six, seven. And then we have zero, which is just gonna be zero, four bits to represent that zero though, since this is in hex. So this is gonna be the two's complement representation of this. So we have our negative number with ones padded on the left-hand side to represent our sign bit. So let's convert this to positive in binary. So remember, we're going to take all of the bits on the left-hand side and flip them, but we're going to take the least significant bit that's a 1, and that's going to be the same, and then all the bits to the right of that are also going to be the same. So let me pad this so we can see and actually have it line up. One one zero 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 zero. sorry. All of these are going to be flipped. But now we have our least significant byte that's a one. So that's a one right there. And everything to the right of that one is going to be the same. So these bits are not flipped. So this is true for all cases. So we have our positive here. Now if we wanted to represent that in decimal, very simple, we have our powers of two right here. So this is zero, one, two, four, 16. So two to the power of four, since that's the index where we are, is gonna be 16. But remember, this was a signed number, so we actually have to add the negative value right there to represent our sign bit on the left hand side. Thanks so much for watching Lori Wired everyone. In this tutorial we took a look at how we could represent signed and unsigned numbers in binary, hexadecimal, and decimal, and we did a lot of conversions between those different numbers, and we looked at how the processor is actually representing negative numbers in two's complement, and actually padding numbers with ones to represent the negative sign bit or padding with zeros to represent the positive sign bit. So thanks for watching Lori Wired everyone and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Not now, this is for real. There's like no fish I can eat. Come on.